All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Suri Nagarajan from Software AG. And I also have Pavan with me on this uh, call. This is my third consecutive time as a speaker at API Days. And I must say it has been a real pleasure uh, all along. So today we are going to present to you about uh, challenges in the mesh apps and services architecture. And in detail, how can we make microservices talk to each other in a better way? I will start with a little bit of business context before we get to the technology side of things and followed by a live demo. Um, to begin with, the way we are building apps have changed a lot. Apps are everywhere, right? So, and in the digital business world, apps are even more critical for business to deliver services and products to um, customers, partners, and suppliers. But the way they are built today is uh, changing. Four key trends are driving a modern architecture for developers to create enterprise-grade applications. Scale is number one. Cloud is the biggest story of our time um, because of cloud providers, um, the infrastructure cloud providers, they have created a nearly infinite resource for physical scalability in the cloud. It has changed the way you think about designing applications, whether you are dealing with apps that have uh, seasonal fluctuations or apps where you anticipate rapid growth. Cloud is the new normal for handling scalability goals. And data and services that you get from systems of record is diversifying. You now have data in SaaS applications, IPaaS platforms, but you still have custom applications and on-prem on systems, right? So you have ERPs, mainframes, which are mission critical. APIs have emerged as the common mechanism to easily deliver that information via services to internal and external consumers. Especially in social, mobile, and web channels, agility has become a key technology requirement. Uh, and with it, we have seen the rise of uh, microservices. With microservices, IT leaders can uh, decompose services with different requirements, speed up development by allowing teams to operate uh, independently, adapt to rapidly changing requirements, and be massively scalable. They don't have to be deployed with other services in your ecosystem. Um, this independence is useful to IT as it enables teams to work at their own pace and to uh, business leaders who want to introduce new products and services quickly without the long release times for traditional applications. Personalization is the ability to deliver targeted information and features for the consumer. So understanding the consumer context is how apps are able to become more successful today. These trends, the four trends that I just spoke about are reflected in the statistics that show which direction business are moving. Uh, by the end of this year, over 83% of workloads will be done in the cloud. APIs have transitioned to a, a critical business resource that has managed uh, uh, much like a, like a product is managed, but with its own life cycle. And microservices are now considered essential for agility as the business seek to find ways to handle market disruptions. So on these changes are motivated by application needs. Um, you will have to deliver new products faster because microservices allow your teams to operate independently and use tools of their choice. They can deliver faster and be ready for growth. Run in an environment where you can pay for what you use and dynamically scale up if you need to. Frictionless uh, commerce, another, uh, you know, the, the cloud native apps, they make it easier for partners and customers to do business with you in the cloud. Adapt to market change, you can uh, quickly modify and redeploy microservices behind the scenes in a fraction of the time you would need to modify a legacy application. 
deployment options you know you can choose the least expensive or most appropriate uh, hyperscaler for the job with multi cloud uh, deployments you can choose best of the breed but all these things take a back seat to the key metric customer experience all your customer solutions must have all these characteristics and able to track usage model behavior and personalize the experience to create sticky apps so uh, a businesses need to think about apps not just services so this has made us to expand our products uh, beyond api gateway and portal to provide a new layer of contextual control over your microservices we call this app mesh um, to give you an example you may have a retail application that aggregates products from several different brands in order to get your consumers to use your website to purchase uh, your goods you want to ensure they find products that are interesting to them more quickly but this app is uh, you know it comprises of many different capabilities each running in a different microservice it could be ordering payment shipping billing um, not to mention a separate service to pull the list of uh, products product catalogs from each of the brands so when an application consists of many services a new set of functions become important uh, these help api developers adapt refine extend and do diagnostics on the app without needing to uh, make core changes to the underlying services on the business side application owners want to understand how the app is being used so they can refine it they don't want to see individual statistics and uh, diagnostics for each microservice uh, and they want to be able to trace the path a consumer takes uh, and finally it managers need to be able to secure and govern the application so only authorized uh, users can access each service and any sensitive personal data is protected um, you know as per regulations web methods app mesh does this by injecting a lightweight micro gateway into the service to apply policies to uh, service requests before they get to the service provider these policies can be anything from access control policies to data mapping and transformation based on inbound information it can do intelligent routing data protection visibility traffic control uh, you could do personalization um, service access and reuse could be enhanced um, other examples of cloud native applications that could be you know um, uh based on individual microservices uh, something like ticketing applications all these are very relevant when it comes to using the microservices applications that uh, personalize content for their end users they can show a dramatic shift in behavior um, in our app mesh example we can see the difference between an application that has no context and delivers uh, plain vanilla content to a mysterious consumer you now could be a, your consumer could be a male could be female choosing some 30s age range um, and content that is tuned to a 20 to 25 year old male from a particular region uh, by aggregating the data into detailed and accurate segmentation such as service type device type geolocation and many more the goal is to achieve a one to one message so this means that content everything from brand offers and the messages to product recommendations they can be served to specific consumer types based on a specific context giving marketing the power to affect um, consumer behavior um, online on a whole new level so this is especially re relevant today you know as european uh, business now have to comply with gdpr and we are seeing new privacy laws proposed in north america which will limit the usage of cookies and we have my data coming in uh, korea and other regions in asia pacific so this becomes really really relevant in today's uh, context so these cloud native applications delivered via microservices and apis they are actually key to growing businesses 
um, cloud deployments can handle enterprise workloads for a long time. Um, you know, for a long time, businesses were more comfortable using application specific uh, clustering or mainframe solutions on prem that had a predictable capacity. Now, running in API led cloud solutions are the easiest way for customers and partners to interact via mobile, web, social apps. And when it comes to uh, distributed architectures, you can you have now the freedom to deploy in cloud containers. They give you more options, private cloud, public cloud, multi-cloud, even hybrid. So the cloud where you have to uh, adopt new tools and be able to uh, architect in a different way. But running enterprise workloads in the cloud is becoming much more common. And in fact, the unpredictability of mobile and social demands, you, you, you need a more dynamic way to scale. Because the APIs are delivered using uh, one or uh, many microservices behind the scenes, it's getting much easier and faster to change them. Right, um, now given this context, um, I'm going to just uh, shift gears and move on to the technology front a bit. Uh, so what's happening is part of a broader trend that started many years ago. So the traditional on-prem deployment of services in what we call a monolithic architecture is focused on quality and reliability. So having all the services in one place uh, makes it easier for IT to establish protocols to control changes, um, SOA introduced the concept of using services to expose data and other capabilities previously trapped in monolithic applications. But developers still create services on a single platform, right? So to take advantage of the potential of the cloud, some organizations jumped into the new world of microservices and APIs with uh, which disrupted um, you know, with the distributed containerized architectures and kind of disrupted the whole uh, ecosystem. So they can achieve agility and scalability this way. But at the end of the spectrum, automation and DevOps become essential. So you can now have tons of uh, hundreds of services running that need to connect with each other. But how are these services going to find each other when IP addresses change every time? Right. Every time a new container comes up, the IP addresses change. How will they securely connect with each other? How will they, um, with the distributed cloud ar architecture, how does an application log, monitor, and trace uh, service calls? So these are just some of the challenges that you will have when you adopt uh, microservices. And how do you handle this? Do you code it in each individual service? How do you maintain that if you do that uh, when you code everything in your service? So service mesh was created to handle many of these network issues. There are common functions you need to implement in every service like monitoring, logging events, tracing requests, executing and encrypting all outbound calls, so on and so forth. So in a service mesh, a sidecar proxy is attached to each service and handles all of these uh, standard functions that every service needs. It is called a mesh because these sidecar proxies creating a network mesh of services. It can handle um, service discovery. It can handle observability of services when they are called from uh, other services. Fault tolerant, the, you know, the popular service mesh like Istio supports uh, circuit breaker patterns at the network level and health checks against a load balancing pool. Um, in terms of connectivity, you know, the service mesh can route and traffic configuration, controlling how traffic gets to your cluster at the ports and protocol, protocol level. So service mesh does handle quite a few of these uh, things. But for applications running in the cloud, there is another level of management, control, visibility, and adaptability that is required for an app to thrive. The high complexity of the cloud uh, makes it more challenging to achieve and then how can I reroute services dynamically based on who the consumer is? You know, I gave you the example of um, aggregator application, right? So if your consumer is a male, if he's a fem if it is a female, so based on the context, how do you reroute the services? 
and how can it control user access and um, maybe mask uh, sensitive data? And how can I um, see who is using my application and what are they doing? So how do I throttle the traffic? How do I personalize the application behavior for my consumers? And how can I reuse the services and govern them? So this is not what Service Mesh was built to handle. Again, um, these are things that you would code into each service that is part of the application, but that is a very, very time consuming and potentially error prone solution. So what we have is App Mesh, which gives you all these uh, facilities. You don't have to code in, in anything in your application at all, in your services at all. We are going to demonstrate to you what App Mesh can do for you in terms of you know all these things that sit down here. With that, I will pass it over to Pavan, and he is going to give you a live demo of uh, App Mesh. Uh -huh. Thanks, Suri. Yeah, let me share my screen. So can you all see my screen? Uh, Suri, can you see my screen? Mm, yes, we do. Okay. Okay, thanks, Suri. Thanks, Sam. Um, what we understood from Siri's presentation was that the importance of providing app context to uh, your microservices, not just providing context to your applications, but also the importance of providing context, application application context to your each and every microservice so that they can do their best and provide application uh, specific, uh, context specific responses, right? So just to reiterate certain things that uh, Suri talked about before I actually jump into my demo, right? What we have seen is there is a paradigm shift in the way the applications are, applications have been developed. They used to be monolithic applications that used to be developed previously. Now they have been broken down into uh, microservices. Do they call it as microservices at high level? What they actually have to do is they have to have too many com communications between each other. And these microservices to handle these set of communications that have to happen between these applications, they actually act like a distributed architecture, right? When it comes to distributed architecture, the challenge that we have is these services, which are supposed to be micro, are now started addressing certain set of challenges, as Suri did earlier mentioned. They started addressing the challenges around tracing, secure breaking, routing, service discovery, and configuration. Right? So all our north, north south traffic was for these microservices used to be handled by our API gateway. That was handled, but for those each west traffic that was supposed to be handled which is much more cumbersome compared to not so traffic these days because of microservices. These microservices started actually stuffing these, all these logic into them, their own code, their own uh, uh, business logic. So now what happens is these services, since because they're actually carrying these many cross-cutting contents in them, right? They are no more microservices. They are actually kind of macro services. If you see, if they are carrying uh, cross-cutting contents across each service. So to address this, um, service mesh came in. What it actually effectively did was it externalized these uh, cross-cutting concerns. Uh, let me use my yeah. It used this cross-cutting concerns. It's yeah. Yeah. It actually externalized these cross-cutting concerns into a, a proxy that runs parallel to uh, your microservice, right? Just for reference, I've just used a, 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 a microservice that's being containerized and running in the report. So there is a sidecar proxy that gets deployed, which actually addresses all these cross-cutting concerns. So that now uh, your microservice that you've deployed, which was supposed to be addressing all these concerns, are much more slimmer, the, slimmer and then it can offload all the cross-cutting concerns to these proxies. So now all the invocation from the north-south traffic uh, happens via these proxies. That means uh, all the north-south traffic, uh, traffic that comes in gets hit, uh, gets uh, received by these proxies and these proxies communicate with each other and then augment any specific capabilities that are needed like tracing, circuit breaking, routing without having to make changes to your services. And it does it so well that even services are not aware of these uh, proxies that have been deployed in parallel. This worked very well when we talk about just the network context, but there are a few other unaddressed concerns like Suri did mention earlier. So how do we give them application context? All we, all we are talking about right now is technical context or a network context to your services or microservice. But your microservice is still handling certain uh, cross-cutting concerns like data masking. That means if for some reason I have a sensitive data that needs to be shared for a particular set of 
context that I get a request from. That means I have two requests that are coming in. For one request, I should be able to say, share the sensitive data. And for another request that comes in, I should be able to master information. So I don't want to make the changes. I don't want to put the logic inside my microservice. So I should be able to externalize that, right? Similarly, I should be able to connect, collect analytical information. This information that we collect here on the service mesh side, right? I have for uh, easier reference, or maybe I will use Istio and service mesh interchangeably, but there are other implementations of service mesh. But the service mesh implementation itself makes sure it, it captures all the traffic information, but it won't give you analytic information about how many applications did this microservice serve, right? So those sort of application specific uh, analytical information is missing out. So that needs to be handled by the service itself. Similarly, if I want to provide uh, <coughs> user identification or app identification to my service, right? And Suri's uh, uh, deck, he did present about a uh, um, retail site wherein based on a specific context given by the application itself, there'll be specific offerings that will be shown to the customer. So if I have to do that, I should be able to understand the user, right? And then his profile, and then also apps profile, based on which the microservice can change its behavior, right? And also there should be an element of request processing that's needed to identify where the request is coming from and then how the service should act when a specific request comes from a specific uh, device type or maybe from a specific geolocation. So all of these contexts are still being handled by microservices itself, right? The network context is handled by a service, uh, a proxy that is deployed by your deployed by uh, uh, service mesh, but these unaddressed concerns are still there are being handled in the, the service, right, microservice. So what is effectively needed is consumers are looking at being able to reuse these microservices. That means I have a catalog of microservices inside my organization, but there is no catalog. And that means I have a huge set of uh, APIs, uh, microservices, but there is no catalog of these uh, services that I could be reused. So consumers or product, sorry, providers are looking for reusability of services. And on the other hand, consumers are looking for more control. That means of these consumers of these microservices, it might be internal to your organization. They are looking at getting much more control, fine-grained control into in terms of uh, how these uh, uh, microservices being used as API, right? And last but not the least, the administrators, or the platform administrators or the security teams are looking at how do I secure these microservices which are actually uh, dealing with secure data, right? How do I secure them? How do I enhance their uh, authentication? How do I <clears throat> make sure uh, I enable uh, OAuth specific to uh, specific microservices, right? How do I do that? So these are three concerns that um, uh, we are trying to address. That means how do we make sure we keep that context and then also provide consumers, providers, and then also the administrators, uh, things that they are looking for, reusability, control, and security, right? So if you look at uh, the architecture of today for uh, service mesh, what you actually see is a control plane. I won't get into the nitty gritties of it, but it actually provides all the infrastructural elements that are needed for running the service mesh itself. But there is something called data plane that is responsible for running for those, uh, that is responsible for running the uh, sidecars that we talked about earlier, which actually proxies all the network contexts. But now effectively what we need is this set sidecars which actually can provide uh, application context to these services so that services doesn't have to deal with uh, uh, application context specific data right so this is something that we need as a 2b architecture so that's where app mesh comes in what it allows you to do is effectively inject a micro gateway that runs parallel to your uh, microservice and provides all the application context that's required so we are not actually disturbing Istio out here Istio is doing its job of providing network context but actually web methods API gateway, which acts as a parent or host for all the host for our app mesh, injects the required uh, micro gateway, which provides application context to your microservice. Okay, and then this whole setup could run in uh, Kubernetes flavor of your choice, right? And then we also support multiple implementations of service mesh. It's not just Istio, uh, Linkerd, we do have support for Linkerd and few other implementations of service mesh. So what it allows you to effectively do is actually index the sidecar and provide application context that needed by services. So services can just focus on the business logic, not having to deal with any uh, transformation, translations, or uh, digesting the app context and then behaving accordingly, right? All of that could be done by the micro gateway that's running in parallel. So with this, maybe I'll straight away jump into my demo, right? 
and the demo setup would look something like this. I have a um, uh, certain set of microservices that I deployed, and they are well orchestrated by this one uh, uh, central uh, microservice called Product Page. It's a UI which provides you aggregates information from aggregates information about a specific book and what its reviews are, and then what's the detail about details of the book, and then what has been the user rating. This page, product page, actually aggregates this information and then uh, shows it to the user. Right? The way these microservices have been deployed, as you can see, I've already installed service mesh on top of it so that there is an NMOI proxy that is running in parallel, right? which is, as we talked about earlier, it actually is handling the network context. Right? It was doing all the root balancing. Right? One of the examples here is that when the product page is being invoked, it takes a round robin approach to call these three versions of reviews. Right? In one review, there is no review at all in the page. I will show you that in the demo. And then there's one more review wherein the reviews are shown in red. And there's one more review version of review wherein the reviews are, in, are shown in black. Right? So that's why there are three flavors of it. And then that round robin uh, invocation is done by Istio as of now. That's the best that Istio is doing as of now. But the details page itself is directly invoked via the NY proxy. There has not been any change. And the review service itself will call the rating service to invoke the rating, get the rating out. Right? So this is the demo setup. So if you were to look at it in Kiali, I'll show it to you in uh, live later. But here you have a product page, invokes a review, review invokes a rating, and then ratings are pulled out from MongoDB. That's the demo setup. Right? So my uh, microservices are running basically on a vanilla Kubernetes cluster, right? So let me switch over to my browser. So can you all see, uh, Suri, can you see my browser? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay. Sure. So let me refresh my, refresh all these pages. I might have logged out by now. Okay, so I have, I have my Kubernetes dashboard up here. I have my uh, Kiali. Right for visualization, and I have my API gateway. This is where all the magic happens of injecting the um, micro gateway happens here in the uh, API gateway. I'll show it to you later. But let's look at the application itself. So this is my sample application. This is the product page that I have. As and when I refresh, just give a uh, 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 just keep a look keep a look on the, look at this. Here you can see that reviews keep changing based on the version of review service that's being called. If you notice here. It's red. It either just say reviews. It gives you a red review, or it either gives you a black. So based on the inversion of the review that is being invoked, rating service, uh, review service that's being invoked, the rating or uh, the color changes as well. So that actually tells us that if Istio is effectively working, right? Uh, and then what I've been trying to do now is as part of my demo. So I will use the same setup. But instead of actually letting this details page invoke the details, uh, sorry, details proxy, uh, NY proxy invoke the details page directly, I'll inject that micro gateway and try to mask the data that details page sends back. Right? Right now, if you look at my setup out here, all these information about the book details are being invoked by a microservice that is deployed here. Right? This is my, uh, uh, sorry, here, details service. This is actually providing me information about the uh, details of the book itself. So if I were to just look at the JSON response that from this JSON uh, from this details um, microservice, it would look something like this. If I pass the book ID, it will give me the details of that specific book. What I'll try to do now is I will try to have uh, uh, inject a micro gateway from our app mesh and try to change the behavior of this. Uh, uh, microservice without having to change its code. Yeah. So for doing this, what I'll have to do first is to log into my uh, web methods API gateway, right? That hosts the uh, app mesh control plane, right? And then have to configure uh, details about my microservices. I mean, where, are, where is my microservices running? So if it is running on Kubernetes cluster, so I have to configure that Kubernetes cluster on my uh, web methods API gateway. For doing that, I go to my administration console. It's a one-time effort, right? So for doing that, I like go to my administration console and then look, uh, go into external accounts. And out, out here, I have an option to configure my service mesh details, right? 
So here, if I go to my service mesh details, it's asking me for a configuration file. And this configuration file actually introduces the uh, host of your microservices to app mesh. In this case, host is my Kubernetes cluster that's running. So I will browse and then provide information about my uh, Kubernetes cluster to app mesh. Right? Once I do this, uh, you will see a magic happening. That means the Kubernetes uh, the app mesh itself will introspect all these microservices that are running in a specific namespace that I provide and should actually list them in my app mesh tab, which I will show you to you in, a, in, in uh, my next, uh, in later stages, yeah? So let me configure a few other details that the app mesh needs, right? Because when once we deploy this micro gateway that runs parallel to your microservice, it needs to contact back this uh, web method API gateway because this web method API gateway is the control plane for it. So it needs to contact back this API gateway. So that's why I need to provide the details. So let me clean that information here. And then for deploying the sidecar micro gateway itself, I need to specify which image should it be using, right? So which image or a Docker image that it should be using. using. So in this case, I'm providing that information. And once this image is inflated on Kubernetes, what port it's supposed to run on? So I'm providing 7070 out here, right? And then maybe I'll provide 2071. I've been using it for a while now. Okay. And then which namespace it's like what in, in service mesh, what we actually do is we actually enable um, service mesh IKA injection to specific namespaces. But it's very much similar to that. Here also, we provide the <coughs> injection of micro gateways to specific namespaces so that you have fine grained control rather than injecting micro gateways to every service that you deploy on Kubernetes. You can pick and choose, right? Uh, which um, specific namespace, right? They want to add that um, micro gateway to. If you look at my Kubernetes out here, Kubernetes deployment out here, I have multiple different namespaces. One of the namespaces that I also have is books, book, book app. Yeah, that's where all my uh, services have been deployed, right? So once I that once I before I once I save this configuration, right? I get a confirmation saying that the configuration is saved. What happens here under app mesh is it automatically introspects all the APIs, right? Which are actually deployed on this Kubernetes cluster namespace, right? Or Kubernetes namespace, right? If you could see all the, maybe I'll show it to you here, all these services that were actually deployed on my cluster, Kubernetes cluster, is now visible on my app mesh. So this is still not a magic. So where, where the magic happens is when I go to the details of a specific detailed service, right? It gives me very basic information about, uh, okay, there's a site called proxy deployed for this service, microservice, and then some technical information about what's the deployment specification like, site site deployment specification like, what sort of filters have been applied. This is a very basic information. But if you want to give an add context to it, first thing that you do here is to AP5 this API, uh, this microservice, right? So I AP5 this now. Once I AP5 this, this microservices become an API inside my gateway. Right, so this is much more powerful than just running it as microservice because this API that got that gets created once I API it allows you to add all the application context that we have been bragging about for like last ten to fifteen minutes now. So once you API it, you actually get to add these, uh, augment this uh, behavior of your my underlying microservice by providing them micro uh, by providing them more run of application context, right? So when it when the app mesh pulled the information from uh, the service mesh itself, there is very basic information that's available, right? That means I, it just says what port it's running on, and then what's the uh, resource that are available, and then it's a very basic resource. So this is not the actual service that is actually running in the background. So I have the JSON available for that uh, specific service. I will add the JSON, right, out here. Okay, I update this. So I have to change the type. It's not an open API spec, it's a Swagger spec. So I have it, right? I've just added more of a documentation and other related information. And now you can see that the resources have been added to that specific service, right? And now what I could do is I can just deploy it as it is without changing anything. I can just have added a, a JSON and then I go to my uh, app mesh again out here. 
right? And then <clears throat> go to my view details. These are details is the microservice that I want to uh, augment with some certain set of capabilities. So I just deploy this now, right? What actually happens in the background is, uh, let me finish this deployment finish first, right? The sidecar or a micro gateway gets injected in between your Istio proxy and the microservice itself, right? Once the deployment happens, you actually get to change the behavior of your microservices, right? So once now it's the micro gateway has been deployed. Now, if you could uh, see the details out here. So it's quite slow. I'm connecting to a VM that's running elsewhere, right? You can see that micro gateway has been injected between your sidecar proxy and your microservice itself. But this micro gateway that's running on 7071 is effectively doing nothing because I'm not being changing any policies as such. So if I go here and then refresh my book page out here, maybe it's still coming up. Let's wait for a while. It's still coming up. Maybe here and my thoughts. So you can see that the details page is not up. It, uh, detailed services is not responding yet uh, because my micro gateway is still coming up. Let's just look at what's wrong. Okay, so basically now there has been a new uh, change in the policy of your uh, policy of Docker. What it has done is actually it has put a limit in terms of number of free pulls that I can do from uh, Docker Hub of, of for a free account. So that's where uh, it's not being able to pull the Istio proxy image, right? What it actually basically does is it tries to inject this uh, micro gateway in between your sidecar proxy and then the microservice. And this micro gateway gets listed out here, right? So once it gets listed, you what you can actually do is effectively go to this detailed service and apply policies out here, right? What sort of policy you can apply? You can apply, change the transformation from HTTP to HTTPS protocol from HTTP to HTTPS, and you can actually enable them to respond on a JMS endpoint, though it is more, it was not meant to run on JMS endpoint, it can enable to run them on a JMS endpoint. Similarly, you can provide them uh, different set of identity and access management for the same uh, microservice that you have deployed without having to change your deployment. All the things that I've been doing here is mostly the configuration, right? And then also things around traffic monitoring. This is where the key value of uh, 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 app mesh comes in, where it provides you a way to analyze your application from an application uh, from a uh, analyze your microservices from an application's perspective. You can have analytics related to your applications enabled under traffic monitoring, and then also you can add a bit uh, because if you have this cross charging between departments and you want to measure uh, measure the utilization of each microservice that your department has developed for other internal department. You can do that by monitoring the traffic across your uh, uh, service services that microservice that we have been deployed. And then what I will be using for my demo is uh, masking the data. That means what I can do is I can edit this surface or maybe the site card that is getting deployed, right? And here under JSON path, I know what is the response for my detailed service. I want to mask this information that ISBN 13, I want to mask this not to be shown on the screen. Maybe let's see whether it's still running. It's still giving us the same issue, right? This happens because yeah, there is now a change in the Doc Hub uh, spec. We should be having uh, a paid subscription to Docker Hub or else you will have a limit of 100 invokes within six hours last, uh, within one six, or within last six hours, you can only do uh, six invokes, that's more, more than that, uh, more than 100 invokes. So that's why I get this error here. So basically what I'm trying to do here is that um, I will try to mask this information of what, instead of showing this value out here, I want it to be masked as something else. So I'll pick this um, JSON parameter name and then go to my, um, uh, Service so uh, API gateway out here under JSON path because my responses for that microservice is a JSON. So for that, I will add a criteria saying that 
anything that comes with this parameter name to mask it to something else. So I would say mask of API days. So now what would happen effectively is when I add this out here and save this. So effectively, this API that was actually being it was that was supposed to intercept the request going to our microservices sorry, here is being now asked to mask any information that is sent back from the microservice in the response micro, my response to be masked as uh, the value that I keyed in, right? So I can deploy it again. Hopefully, um, it's been six hours since I tried my last pull. So once that works. What would happen is you could see that there will be three deployments basically one is the istio proxy the microservice itself and then the newly deployed uh, uh api micro gateway uh web methods gateway right so now let's look at what's happening out here go to the logs uh what is happening with istio proxy it's starting and what's happening to our this pod is also initializing. So there are effectively three pods that are getting initialized. One is the detail service. That's a service that we want it to be. Uh, uh, that's our microservice. And Istio proxy. That's the proxy that is injected by uh, uh, the service mesh. Istio in our case. And SAG details v1 is the micro gateway that gets parallelly injected. Right. Mm -hmm. Do I still get an error? Yeah, fail to put the image. So this is because there's been free pulls that's been happening, right? I can easily fix this just by importing this image into my local Docker hub, right? A local Docker uh, registry, right? So this is something that we wanted to look at because just because it's failing, what I will just do is I'll explain you what would have happened. Here in this case, instead of this uh, value that's being ISBN 13 that's being showing up, what it would do actually is uh, it would show this as a mask value, right? So maybe I'll quickly try to uh, import an image. So I'll just do fix this. Just give me a minute. I don't have to pull it from the Docker image. Let me try to import it manually. Sorry. I need my protein. Just give me a minute. I'm just trying to. Logging into the server which runs my Kubernetes. I've logged in here and now I'll try to do a Docker pull of this image that's failing to import it. Directly on my and then I have to provide my uh, namespace as well. So
So I'm just doing my Docker pull. I'm like keeping my yeah, this doesn't make sense. Up to date, it's up to date now. Let's give it a try. Yeah, my now details should be up and running. If I refresh this page. Yeah, now you could see that once the image gets deployed, instead of showing me the ISBN number, which is supposed to be this number out here, 12304, right? Instead of that, it's supposed, now it's showing me the masked value. So what effectively it has done is it has masked the, uh, the response from the, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the service supposed to come from the service itself. Now, if I refresh the service, that also will give me the masked value. Right. So what we have effectively done is actually change the value of uh, one of the parameters that was being sent over by backend microservice, right? And then mask them. And then it's not just about masking. It might not actually add value. Where the value of this comes in is being able to add these set of policies around traffic invocation. You can invoke the traffic uh, logging in, log information, and then you can also invoke monitoring level agreements and then other stuff related to traffic optimization. And then you can even result cache them, cache the results so that the micro gateway can help you with a speedier response to your from your microservices. And then also, if you see, once the micro gateway gets installed, it gets listed out here under micro gateway step. So what it effectively does is it provides you analytics information, analytical information in terms of how the APIs are being invoked. Because now it's intercepting all the requests to your backend system. Right. So now it's effectively Right, in getting information about your uh, right now, I have not enabled any logging as such. If I enable logging, it provides you information about how the API uh, backend microservice have been invoking, how being, it has been invoked. Yeah, so it's not, it doesn't end there, right? This app mesh is a living thing, right? That means what actually happens is as and when you deploy new microservices to your namespace, which app mesh is monitoring, in my case, book app is the namespace that app mesh is monitoring. So it updates this list automatically. So now what I will try to do is I will try to uh, go to my uh, Kubernetes console, right out here, and then try to deploy a new microservice. Yeah, I'll try to deploy a new microservice. Uh, it's called a simple service, and I'm in, I'm actually effectively running it inside my uh, same namespace that's book app. So once I deploy it. Like there's a new deployment that gets created and there'll be a new uh, um, pod that gets to run inside a book app, right? That's called simple service that's coming up. So as and when it comes up, even in the inside your app mesh, right? It actually pulls that information about the new uh, service that we've deployed. So it doesn't have to be configured every time. So every time there's a new uh, service that gets added to the, <coughs> namespace that app mesh is monitoring that gets reflected out in the gateway so that it's ready for uh, policy enforcement, new policy enforcement. Yeah. So with this, I'll quickly hand it over to Suvi for uh, uh, conclusion, right? If you have any questions, please drop it over in, our, in the chat window so we can handle it and we can answer it as well, or we will contact you over the email. Yeah. Suvi. Thanks, Pawan. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. So that was a good live demo. Um, yeah. So listeners need to think about apps, not just services, right? So that's what uh, Pawan demonstrated. So this is why we introduced a new layer of contextual control over your microservices. So we call this App Mesh. When these services are part of an application, your new, new set of functions become important. So these help developers adapt, refine, extend, and do diagnostics on an app without needing to make code changes to your underlying services. And the app mesh does this by injecting a lightweight uh, micro gateway 
into the um, service, into your microservice to apply policies to service requests before they get to the service provider. These policies can be anything from access control policies to data mapping and transformation based on info, uh, inbound information. So we demonstrated only the data masking, but it has a lot of other capabilities. It can do intelligent routing, routing based on content and context of specific service. It can do data protection. You can have um, granular authorization control and protection for your uh, personal user data. Uh, visibility, it gives you a lot of visibility. You have landscape dashboard, which shows uh, services in your application. You can even, you even have the ability to create custom monitoring and logging. It gives you a detailed perspective of who's using your app and how are they using it. And think of this from the context of an application, not just from a you know a siloed microservice. It also gives you a lot of uh, personalization capabilities. You can build context-aware data mapping uh, and also transformation, which enables you to modify inbound service requests based on who's asking, how they are asking, and you know where they are, and you can modify the outbound responses too. Also on uh, service access and reuse, um, AppMesh automatically exposes an API uh, for each of your services. Now you have a lot of microservices in your environment, but developers don't really get to know what are those services. You will do runtime discovery, your code can do runtime discovery and all that, but when you are building an application, you still need to know that there is this microservice exists and this is a contract, and this is how you can consume that service, use that service. So all those are missing. So when that is APified by our uh, app mesh, you get a lot more visibility into your service and you can very easily reuse. Um, and with that, I thank you for your time. Um, if you'd like to know more about our products, uh, please do visit our booth. We have a booth. We are also available tomorrow, so you can visit our booth anytime and we will share with you the details. Or you could also go to our website, softwareag.com. We also have free Cloud Trail subscription, so visit our website and you can subscribe to it. We also have our products available on uh, Docker Images on Docker Hub, as Docker Images on Docker Hub, so you are free to try those as well. Thank you once again for your time. Um, it was pleasure to be on EPA Day's uh, Singapore event. Thank you.